um, basic stuff like that. Um, so that would be one resource that I can point you to. But another one, um, get some funding. I mean, that's a difficult one because most dance classes that are catered. Oh, well, I just thought I had to do this, but I don't think I did. Um, so the tricky thing is there, well, there's lots of dance in California, particularly in Southern California, you know, because of the industry. And I, I bet you, um, you can find a beginner adult classes. You just kind of have to do some digging. Um, I'm not familiar with that scene, so I'm not sure, like, I couldn't give you a specific studio. Um, when I was in when I was in college, they had like uh, dance for non majors classes, and that's what yeah. I did. Was I did ballet for yeah. non majors and jazz for non majors and so on, and that was like my thing because because I was major in biology. So, uh, but yeah, and that was really helpful because like we're talking my ballet for non majors class, like my first class I took was so so basic and broke it all the way down to the point where like way easier even than I had learned. And I had already done drum corps and stuff at that point. And I was like, Oh, this is why we do plies. Oh, this is what a jeté is supposed to look like. You know, they really mm-hmm. took it down. So. Yeah. That's a really good point. I didn't even think of that, but yeah, oftentimes like the local, um, even like a community dance class, like that can be really helpful. Um, and I think that's what I did for working on black back <laughs> flexibility I'm trying to work on my back flexibility a lot more um I think if you just work on like going into your back bend um or do start with this like lay on your belly and do um superman where you just raise up and just reach backwards for your feet and hold it and then come back down and then make sure whatever action you do with your spine that you always do the opposite. So if your spine is doing like this, make sure you then do like a child's pose and you tuck your tailbone to your feet. That way you can curve your spine like this. Um, but just that way you kind of like don't mess up your back. But if you just continually do that, it's like stretching, you know, hold it for as long as you can and then take a break and then just do that for, I don't know, 10 reps, and then just continually do it. Um, but make sure you're just being careful and moving in the opposite direction. Yeah, definitely doing the the opposite muscles from each stretch and each strengthening thing that you do. Yeah, here's an interesting one. Oh. I think they're so cute. I've never actually seen one in person. I know there's a few who follow us on Instagram. Like I talk to them all the time and like they send me stuff, but I, I love them. Uh, That's all. (laughs) Yeah. I mean, how can you not enjoy a tiny elementary person spinning equipment? It is the cutest thing. Um, I mean, I, I know. So speaking from the perspective of like doing blue doubles, they have this thing called family every day. I mean, every year before um, they start going on tour. And it's all of the blue double groups. So like the C core with the little kids and then the B core with more of like the in between the, what is it? They're mostly in high school. I like the high school kids. Yeah. Yeah. High school kids and like, you know, young college. And then you have the A core. Um, but we all get together. And it was really, really fun to just kind of see how everyone is um, coming from the same organization and how that kind of, I mean, it's really cool to have met people that started off in the C Corps when they were little and then just to march with them. Not that I knew them when they were little, but just to see on their core jacket, like, from 1995 all the way to 2000. <laughs> I remember seeing that. We'd be on tour and see people from Blue Devils and be like, how could you march for like 12 years? That's illegal. <laughs> We're not realizing at the time, like the age levels of all these of all these groups. Yeah, it is so cute. I mean, I where do you even buy a plaque that's that, that small? 
American band accessories. They have it. <laughs> what the fuck? Oh shoot. Irving mentioned me in his story. I don't even know to know if I know I don't even want to know if I want to know what's going on over there right now. It's probably gonna be a boomerang of him playing. Probably. Okay, hold on. Let me get okay. my phone. Okay. Oh gosh. He said he was going to try twerking up against the wall, so. I'm excited. Let's do it. Tips for someone starting to learn saber and rifle at the same time. Um, I think if you just like, they're really similar in the sense that there's like a big weight at the end of it to keep it going. <laughs> Your facial expression was it said a lot. <laughs> he sent me screenshots from our from our chat. It's good. <laughs> oh, okay. Um, that's funny. Um, yeah, so like the thing that they do have in common is that heavier weight at the end of it, so the butt in the middle. Um, so one tip would be to kind of take that similarity and use it to your advantage and just recognize the weight is really going to help carry that thing around. But you just have to make sure you differentiate between how it feels, like the pinching between the more of the, the full-handed squeeze. What do you think, Jackie? Yes. I actually learned, so I learned rifle first, and then I learned saber without actually learning a separate technique. We ended up, I learned the same exact technique, technique on saber as on rifle. And when I got to Blue Stars, it was like, that's incorrect so i think what we talked about before about being flexible in your technique is going to be really helpful too so if you do end up handling a saber the same way you handle your rifle just know that you're going to have to some adjusting to do if you go yeah, and spin on a saber line go through the cloud, friend. i was tossing nines and tens and they were like um no we just need a six out of you thank you and i was just like oh sorry <laughs> My bad. My bad. <laughs> Oops. My bad. Um, I've got one over on YouTube. It says, um, how do you plan hair and makeup for shows? Our instructor did our hair, but she didn't really have a plan for the makeup. So how do we go about doing that? A mood board. <laughs> yes. Pinterest, so, baby. Pinterest okay, is awesome. Board, like listen to the music. Just on the board, you can put down the different colors and the different like even just um you know emotions you can do different ideas of uh if it were anything literally just like let your brain vomit onto the, the pinterest mood board and um it reminds you of certain types of like architecture or a certain textile um anything you can throw it onto the mood board and then that will help to inspire your makeup look um uh, I also think another great resource is, is just watching New York Fashion Week because a lot of times they have really crazy uh, makeup ideas that yes. I've never thought of. Um, I don't. I didn't have even thought yeah. of that actually. Like just watching watching New York Fashion Week, but like watching it for the makeup and like the hairs because they do they do crazy hairstyles and they do crazy makeup stuff. So yeah, that would be real. I get I get on YouTube. I'm I get on YouTube for everything though. But I get on YouTube and I will look up like people doing makeup on YouTube. I, I watch Jenna Marbles. If you watch Jenna Marbles, she like freaking sticks gemstone. I don't know if you've seen her. She like sticks gemstones yeah. all over her face. She turned herself into a disco like, ball once. YouTube, um, when she first started. That's so crazy. <laughs> I can't believe she's still making videos. Oh my, oh my gosh. That girl is like, she's my idol. I swear. <laughs> Gold, right? Right. That's funny. And she has two master's degrees. What the heck? Um, I don't know anyone else who has two master's degrees before they're 33. Right? <laughs> Any tips for tossing quads and higher? Go to the Spintronics YouTube channel. <laughs> no. Yeah, uh, look up. Just look up quads and higher. I'm pretty sure there's literally... It might be, it might be like, there might be a video on triples and quads and then a triple on a video on fives and sixes. I don't remember exactly how I broke it up, but, um, 
Yeah. Use both, use both hands. I know a lot of people, they try to get their quads out and they just use one hand and they're like, but my other hand is there. And like, but their other hand is just sitting there. It's not like pushing. So push all the way through, make sure your hand gets all the way down to your thigh and then, and then lift. Also separate the two motions. Like don't take both hands at the same time. You want to go push, then lift. That's, yeah. that's going to get your rotations out. Yes, and you also want to use your camera on your phone as a resource and record yourself so you can see if you're actually pushing because, again, I mean, it's really, it's not efficient to only rely on your release hand to crank out the top. Plus, you're going to injure yourself more easily that way. So, when in doubt, push it out. But, yeah, push faster. Um release higher and faster, and also really be mindful of the opening of the hand. The higher the toss goes, the faster the hand has to open. Um, the first time I ever had to toss a seven on Saber, I couldn't get it, and then my friend, Leanne Field, um, she was like, just thinking about it, like shooting out of your hand. Like, it's a rocket. I, I'm, I'm kind of a space nerd, so I'm like, it's a rocket. It'd be perfect for me. <laughs> Love it. Space is so crazy. And fast and scary. Just okay. Um, any basics we should know for Saber? Well, I did a playlist on Saber basics too. Uh, spins, backhands, tosses, hilt tosses, blade tosses, flourishes, tracks. Parallels. All those kind of things. Yeah. I mean, that's, if you're talking about basics, that's, that's okay. Um, okay. Here's, here's a nice one. <laughs> How are you guys? <laughs> I am living my best life. <laughs> what, so what does your day today look like? Like right now. Oh my gosh, it's weird. So, okay, we're right now remodeling the bathroom in our house. Um, and so, like, I have to get up before the work crews get here. And, like, that's when I have to, like, do all my normal morning stuff, like, make, like, have breakfast and whatever. And then my husband works nights. And so, like, he's either just I coming home. Oh. <laughs> tell me how you survive. I'm just going to start texting you randomly in the middle of the night when I'm like, I can't sleep because my husband's working or whatever. Um, but anyway, so then like, Oh gosh, no, I, ah, I cannot girl. Uh, so like I, I get up and I, I like do that stuff. And then usually I jump on social media and like check all, go through all my social media stuff right away. Um, and then basically everything else for the rest of my day literally depends on the weather. Um, I, so like if it's really nice weather out, I'll go outside and film a whole bunch of videos because the weather has been so scary lately. It's been like flipping back and forth bad. So if it's nice, I'll go out and film a whole bunch of videos. Um, like today though, it was a, like torrential wind storms. So I didn't do that. Um, but also today my husband had off. So like when he has his days off, like I'll hang out, we'll do stuff with him. We do a lot of hiking. Um, I've been hiking as much as I possibly can. Um, if the weather's bad, I actually, my phone is chock full of videos that are just sitting there waiting for me to edit. So I'm doing a lot of editing of videos. Um, and then in between all that, I've got like, I have to, I talk to my regular, like my biology students, um, my, and my anatomy students, and we're still having to like do online classes with them. So rather than just having like a set time of day, like this is the online class time, this is my, you know, my office hours or whatever they're basically I've, I've told them like you just message me like if you message me I will get back to you like and usually I get back to them within like an hour or so so I will I'm just constantly like I, I kind of like not having to be required to keep a schedule like you have to be here at this time you have to be here at this time but at the same time it's kind of like well now I feel a little overwhelmed because I have this huge to-do list of things and I, I have to constantly be monitoring what's the most important thing at this point in time so I'm, you know, is it more important that I respond to all these comments on Instagram right now? Or is it more important that I go and talk to 
like this student who's struggling with her anatomy coloring book and having a hard time figuring out which heart valve is which or something like that. So um, I also have the other girls that are helping me with the, uh, with the uh, social medias too. So thank you, Sam and Anna and shy and Ama and everybody, like all of my kids, my, my kids and my staff and everybody who's been helping out with that. So I appreciate that a lot. Cause our, our channels have like ticked up hardcore. So I just brought my friend on to help me out with social media because um, I have a baby and I can't be on my phone oh all day around her, you know? Mm -hmm. So I've been having to like be very conscientious of when I block out time to work. Yep. Um, and it was, it was really difficult whenever I was um, like the past couple weeks when I'm just really getting the, um, the website going and all of that stuff. But it, now that it's kind of like, settle down and the website is pretty much done for now until my, my, all my branding stuff is done. Um, I can just kind of chill and then hop on to Instagram whenever I feel like it's appropriate. Um, but good. I'm glad you're doing good. I, mean, I feel like it's, I need to know how you like teach and have children at the same time, because like, I, I don't have kids and I feel like I am constantly overwhelmed. And I'm like, man, when I, when my husband and I finally like have kids, it's going to be, it's going to be something else. Oh my gosh. You'll figure, you'll, you just make it work. You know what I mean? Um, like on paper, it just seems really crazy, but I mean, you just weave the two things together the best that you can. I mean, it's not always going to be smooth and perfect, but I think at the end of the day, it's just like a matter of, that was my best effort. <laughs> um, I, but to answer your question. Um, so I am not like a full-time teacher anymore. I only teach color art now, um, which is also part of the reason why I wanted to start a business was so I could work from home. Um, so I teach color art and it's just first period in the morning. So I would go to their class, rehearsal and class in the morning. And then at about 9.30, 10 o'clock, whenever class is over, I go home and I'm just, you know, I'm with Zoe for the rest of the day. Um, and then I was teaching an indoor percussion group called VIP um, the past two seasons. And so this season, now that I have a baby, I don't go out quite as often. But I, I go out about, I was going out once every weekend to work on choreography or, you know, take care of whatever it is that we need to take care of. Um and then next year, I'll probably just take her with me to more rehearsals because I care of her while I was gone. Because obviously, like, I can't bring a baby to a, a percussion rehearsal. Right. Oh, and I, when I see people do that, and they're like, oh, no, it's fine. It's fine. My kid's fine. I'm like, like, yeah, but you don't know what you're doing to that kid for, like, the long term or, like, your your focus is yeah, split. Well, yeah, and, like, oh, and your focus is split because you're, like, okay, my kid, my kid, my kid, but, like, I have to be teaching, too, so that's so difficult. Yeah, and luckily I have a, a little sister who is 11 years old, so she's kind of, like, my nanny. Oh, that's sweet. And so if I have to take Zoe somewhere with me, I'll take my little sister, too, and I'll just you know, I'll try to work out a deal with my little sister and get her some boba or something to make it worth her while. Um, it's adorable. Next year, I'll probably, anywhere you see me, you'll probably see Zoe, but she'll be old enough to be at that kind of stuff. Good. Um, although, I don't I don't know how I would be able to, to take her to WDI because then I can't go out. Like, I would have to bring someone to watch her so I could go out. <laughs> you know? So, yep. I, don't, I haven't crossed that bridge yet. I still have a whole other year to think about it. Yeah, you can figure it all out. <laughs> yeah, but well, we're good. We're staying busy. Um, I have a, a good comment over here on YouTube. It says a lot of places are doing a "show me what you got" portion of their audition. So don't forget to keep your tricks up for your audition videos too. There you go. That's, that's really from good. that's from Jared Carey over on YouTube. Yay! And my TikTok happening on Instagram. So if you're like really wonder what's going on, head over to Instagram. <laughs> That's funny. Uh, why can't I do less options for the life of me? Well, probably number one, you are telling yourself that you can't do it. Yep. So 
change that first. You can do it. Your body literally already knows how to do it because you naturally, like, once you learn how to do something on one side, your body naturally already knows how to do it on the other side. So if you can't do it, it's just because you're, like, you're mentally holding yourself back. Um, yeah, that. I think I would just try to take yourself out of that headspace and just think, just pretend that you know how to do it and then do it until it feels like the other side. And hopefully that will remedy that. We did good, by the way. (laughs) (laughs) Oh my god. I freaking love her right. so much. I like how she just took a shower. You can tell because of the hair. <laughs> oh gosh! So, so I've been I've been trying to get you know we've been trying to get Irving to come to summer camp and like you know his job is just like his jobs during the week and summer camps during the week and it just hasn't been working out. I'm like you need to come like. Like, I kind of feel like he embodies all of our, like, cultural things about Color Guard that we've always wanted to change. I feel like Irving has all of them, and he's, like, ready to go. So. <laughs> That's what, I wish I knew, because I marched with Irving when I was a rookie at Blue Devils. Oh, my gosh, did you really? Um, That's awesome. <laughs> yeah. Um, but I wish I knew that he was this funny. Like, I didn't really see that side of him like Mm -hmm. we were friends and we were cool but I didn't know that he was that there was this goofy side of him (laughs) I I knew that he was goofy but (laughs) yeah um Yeah, he's hilarious. I, I just remember when his Patricia video came out and it was like such a huge thing all over. Everybody sent it to me. They're like, isn't this color guard? Isn't this like the thing that you do? Color guard? I'm like, oh, I'm like yeah, this is color guard. You froze on me for a little bit. Oh, sorry. I was plugging it in. It probably just didn't like that I plugged it in. <laughs> oh, it was only at like 26% okay, or fine. something. My phone's at 10%. But I mean, we're at We've got about five minutes left of this anyway. Okay, cool. <laughs> do we have a lot of um, do we have a lot of questions built up? I think I've got all the ones on YouTube. Oh, how do you get people how do you get people on board and willing to put in time for their hair and makeup? Um, they hated doing hair and makeup. Like I you just put it in the schedule. Really, that's all I do. I'm like, okay, this is your like two hour block. Your hair and makeup has to be done by the end of this. And like this is what it has to look like. You know, we actually do, like, a little hair and makeup training session. That's smart and necessary, I think. Mm Because a lot of times these these kids in high school are, like, I have never put on one single swipe of eyeshadow. Um, Yep. (laughs) You know, um, so with my students particularly, they had the biggest fit whenever I made them wear makeup for Winter Guard. Because I wasn't there for football season. So they were just kind of like doing whatever my friend, who was their sub, had them do. And they didn't, their breath making music, so they didn't focus on making right. They just focus on spinning together. So they, I personally dealt with that because they didn't want to put on makeup because A, they felt like they didn't know how and that they didn't want to walk around looking like a fool because they didn't know how. Yep. So um, maybe that's, that's great, a great point if you guys just kind of have a day where you either bring in someone who is well versed in um, makeup application, or you send out a, uh, a one of the many thousands of makeup tutorials on YouTube. Wait, there are even makeup them. tutorials. If you go to Spintronics YouTube, <laughs> we have makeup exactly. tutorials too. Because we, I had some members who did it. Um, that's actually something I wanted to talk about too. Is like uh, there was a question that we didn't get to t- to do on our previous uh, live stream about raising money. One of the things that we do for our fundraiser is like some of the students, I'll offer them this option of, well, if they want to continually make content for us, then I would knock some off of their fees because our content does bring in money for our team. Um, And all of the money that we make off of our, our social media goes to the team. So, uh, so I've been like, well, if you want to make, 
makeup tutorials or whatever, you know, you can come in and do that. And, and we use that as sort of a fundraiser. We have had it in trial. Like we've been trying it the last couple of years with just a few students. And I think next year's going to be the first time we'll be like, okay, here's like full blown make content and we will, you know, knock some off of your fees. So we have some content that's made by students. That's like by our performers. That's like, okay, here's some instructionals. Here's some makeup tutorials and so on and so forth. So. That's so smart. And that's really awesome that yet again, you're using your uh, 